Hello everyone. Firstly, I want to just say hi, a special hi to all of the wonderful subscribers that I have that have been writing me emails, sending me messages, passing the maps around and just doing everything they can. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, now I'm going to get started. You know me, it's Kirsty and I'm the Criminal Astrologer. Today I'm going to have a look at a couple more aspects of the Valo case. Uh, I don't even know what you would call this case, it is crazy. But last time we had a look at Alex Cox um, 911 and then death chart and the death of Charles Valo. Now what I want to look at is the chart of Tylee when she was last seen which was this day and also the chart for JJ who was seen on a different day um, now we're gonna actually look at JJ's chart first so so yeah this is the photo that was taken on the 8th of September 2019 where they're both in it and Tylee was not seen after this. Now that there is Alex Cox, who's now dead. So he was at Yellowstone as well on this day that the photo was taken. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have a look at JJ. This may be a bit hard to see, but just to sh so you can see the top of it here, JJ vanishes on the 23rd of September, 2019 at 3 p.m. and I put 3 p.m. because he went to school that day then never went to school the next day and was unenrolled so the last time he was seen was after school on the 23rd of September so this is the chart that we're working off for JJ or Joshua now First of all, as always, I look at this area here, the Ascendant, which represents Joshua. That is at zero degrees of Capricorn. So he is represented by Saturn, because Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. Now, the suspect or person of interest or somebody involved in the disappearance of JJ, not necessarily a killer, I mean, we will unfold to whether that's happened in this scenario or not, but the seventh house isn't necessarily always a killer, but it's the, op the, the opposing person in the situation. So the opposing person or the person of interest or the suspect in this case is Cancer, and Cancer is ruled by the moon. And the moon and Cancer, and everybody knows this usually, it's female and it's our mother's. It's feminine mother stuff and that's exactly what's in that area. So one has to wonder, has his mother actually taken care of him and taken him somewhere else or has she done something to him? So we'll have a look a little bit more at this chart and find out. Okay, so the first thing I do when I look at a chart like this and we have really no clue of where this child is, we look at the moon as well to represent the child. So the moon and the suspect in this instance is represented by the moon and by the, um, by the moon in the seventh house, the child and the mother. So let's just take JJ to be Saturn as this area here. So his phys this is him and his physical body. It's in the first house. So it's close to where he was last seen. So that leads me to believe that he's not actually too far away. Now, interestingly, the moon, which is the ruler of the suspect, sits in its own home. So I have to, and they are actually opposing each other, Saturn and the Moon there, widely. But I have to wonder, has his home literally been switched? Has he been moved? So normally it's quite clear to see where something... 
and I'll just move this down a bit so it's easier to see. So, you know, has he been moved from his home to another home? Now, this can indicate this, this swap, this swapping here. It's, it's, it can show a couple of things. It can show that his mum is actually responsible for doing something that's not good, but I would be more likely to say that it was bad if this angle here was at 29 degrees, but it's not, it's at zero. Zero is new beginnings. So when the seventh house cusp and the ascendant, so here's JJ here with a zero degree of Capricorn. Capricorn is underground as well, and zero is new beginnings. I can't help and I have to assume essentially straight away that he's not actually deceased and that he's been hidden underground. Now the fact that they were into doomsday and stuff like that, I've done a little bit of research. There's a few places that he, that the, the children could be if they were alive. There's Fort Igloo I think it's called which is in South Dakota. There's a couple of places around. Um, that I know that they would have been well aware of if they were truly doomsdayers and knew how to bunker down. So, I mean, the, the likelihood with all of the other deaths surrounding this family, the likelihood of them being bunkered down, I suppose you could say is slimmer than normal, but everybody that is deceased is in and around this sort of religion and or is uh, or was asking questions or getting in the way of said religion now would the children do that really you know like wouldn't they just go where they're told and if their mum would love them and their brother thinks that perhaps she wouldn't do that then maybe it's a, maybe they're actually safe so there's another thing here, the sun is at zero degrees of Libra. So there we have again, new beginnings. Um, the ninth house is not in the neighborhood. So the th if it was the third house, we would say, well, he's very, very close to his home. But the ninth house there, all this energy in the ninth house sort of shows me that he's not close to home. like. So Saturn shows me that he's near his home and then this shows me that he's far away from his home. So one would lead you then to assume that he's actually gone from one home to another home that's far away. I truly hope that that is the case. Anyway, let's just keep looking. So the closest aspect to Saturn, because that's what we want to look for is the closest aspect. And that, that is actually the square to Mercury and to Venus. They are both exactly the same distance. So the fact that there's a square there to these, Mercury, which is siblings, so that could represent Laurie and her brother, because this is when JJ vanished, Alex Cox was alive at this time. Then we have a female in the background there, and then we have a male in the background, you know, the, all the players are sort of here. Um, and then the part of fortune is also up here. So even though there's a square from Saturn to Mercury, and then it actually forms a T-square to the North Node in the seventh house, it doesn't really show me death as other charts would. Um, now I'm not saying that he's not gone, I, I truly hope that he has not gone, but I can't say either way, you know, this is this is something that's very fluid and can be hard to read, so I'm not going to definitively say either way, yes or no, but I get the feeling that he's actually okay. Now I will say that I haven't looked hard at Tylee's chart at the moment, and I think that that's going to indicate a whole lot of things in regard to JJ as well. So we need to look at both of them. But um, so yeah, that's sort of that's what this is showing me. Um, the closest aspect to the moon is the opposition to Pluto. 
it's not a great aspect, an opposition from the Moon to Pluto. Pluto is widely conjunct Saturn, which is JJ. Pluto is a very malefic planet, it's harsh, but it's also, it's like the death card in tarot, so it doesn't mean you're actually going to die, but it means that a lot of changes can occur. So the Moon opposing Pluto, although it's not a very nice aspect in general with event charts like this, it can also indicate that he, the mother has changed this person's life, so the JJ, completely. And moving him underground certainly would do that. Um, you know, I do. I see so many of these cases, and not very often I see charts where I feel as though there's actually life. And this one really does give me hope that he's okay. This, the zero degrees, um, the sun, the ascendant, and the descendant. It's like the per if the perpetrator being the female being Laurie has given him a new life. Now I'm not saying it's a good new life, but it's a new life nonetheless. JJ being ruled by Saturn and being in the first house and Capricorn and Saturn being under the earth definitely shows that it's a possibility that they are bunkered down. Now like I said before, there's a couple of little things that are a concern. We, I mean we do have Mars which is angry and uh, everything to do with murder basically can be related to Mars. Weapons, guns, knives, hitting, all sorts of things. So when I see Mars in the 8th house here, which is this area, I don't really like that. That's not great. But it's very close to the ninth house, so it's really sort of compact in, in with this group of planets which shows a whole bunch of people um, moving away from their home to go to another home. Now, like I said, the square there, I mean, that could have been, maybe JJ was in the way of a new life, and that's a possibility, and I can't rule that out. But as I said, I can't change it, and I can't change what I see, and what I do see is that he could he could actually still be alive. So I think it's important to look at Tylee's now and see how hers looks because if Tylee's not alive, then I don't believe JJ is alive. So I'm expecting to see similar traits on both of these charts. Now this is Tylee's chart for, it's actually for lunchtime on the 8th of September 2019 at Yellowstone. Now I don't like initially what I'm seeing here because if you'll recall from the other video with Charles and Alex, we had Taurus and Scorpio on the Ascendant and the Descendant. So once again we've got those two. And we know something fishy went on with Alex and we know that Charles was murdered and they both had these going on. So firstly this points to me in instantly because it's virtually the same degree. It's only a degree away from Charles's chart. This shows me that Tylee was a witness to what happened and possibly something had to happen because of that. Now look at this bunch of planets again. Now they're in the 10th house, right out in the public. So it's like you've got the female related to the sibling, and then the, the male, which I see as Chad. And now we've got Mars right behind there. But now what's happening is we're forming a pattern here that you can see quite clearly this is called a mystic rectangle and it comprises of oppositions going this way and that way, trines going there and there and sextiles going there and there. There's also a, a whole bunch of major aspects going on here. This big triangle, this big square that you'll see is very repetitive over here, up here. Okay, so let's jump into it. Tylee is represented by Mars because Scorpio is on the... 
this is the area that represents Tylee. So Scorpio is Mars. As I just pointed out previously, Mars is just at the end of the other people that were at the at Yellowstone. So she's there in the public, which is the tenth, having a photo taken, which is why this public is now uh, this photo has now become public through the FBI. So that that's this. Okay, if there is a suspect in this, it is ruled by Venus, because that's Taurus. Venus is over here as well, and Venus is a female, as we know. Venus was the female in the other two charts that we did. So to me, Venus is actually Laurie. Now, I know that it's her mother. So essentially she is represented more so by this IC down here in Aquarius. So I feel that there was a very distant relationship between Laurie and Tylee. Um, and that would be, that's this Aquarian IC here. Um, the moon which co-rules Tylee but not so much because she's a bit older. The moon is our mother. And that is wedged at 16 degrees right between Saturn and and Pluto. Now just a few weeks before that JJ is ruled by Saturn and he's gone and now the moon which is the mother and our emotional self but it's showing me at this time on the 8th of September that he, the mother Laurie had plans on doing something to both of them at this time. And that's that connection with this and this down here. So unfortunately this chart just does not look as good as JJ's chart in terms of this, her state of well-being. Now that could be uh, for a couple of reasons. One that she's not happy at all with the choice that was made and where she went on this day or two, the unthinkable and the horrible other thing that everyone knows. So the moon here is concerning being wedged between these two malefic planets, Saturn and Pluto. It's conjunct the third house cusp. The third house is communication and thinking, talking. So mum is thinking about changing the life of Tylee at this point. And JJ but I think what this mystic rectangle is showing us was that this was the day that was going to be the last day that Tylee was going to be seen the thing that is interesting is is that we don't have any harsh planets or anything really going on in these angles um, we do have all this in the 10th house but that's really the photograph of all the people and Tylee just being shown to the public um, there is an opposition between these planets and Neptune so the photo that we see could be quite deceiving um, but there's two, two sides to Neptune sometimes it can see, seem deceiving but then the same with sort of Letitia Stark. everyone thought she was extremely intelligent and conniving and what whatnot Neptune was very prominent in the chart with her and Ganon and she's actually proven to be very see-through um, and has said a lot so Neptune can be quite see-through so either the police or FBI gathered a fair bit of information from this photo and saw through the apparent happiness of what you know and what's going on or the whole trip was a lie now I have concerns about, I've read that people think that the children may be at Yellowstone National Park because of this fact because she van vanished on this day. But I find that a little bit hard to, to see, I'll show you why. This is Yellowstone National Park. Now I've looked at a fair few photos and at most times there's people everywhere. But obviously there's these, well, I've never been there, I'd love to go. But obviously there's these walking trails and 
platforms etc so there's there seems to just be I mean there's plenty of water holes and things like that but for one minute do I think that they've put them in a hole like this or something no not at all um, I just don't see it see everywhere is so precarious precarious here craters bodies of water I mean there's so many people around that I mean look at all these people here looking at this one area it's not the safest place to get rid of somebody I mean look we have horse back riders here's another trail people walking along the trail you know so the photo that they're in as you can see it's one of these type of areas so you know I, I don't I just don't feel as though they've been taken and put in yellow I mean I know Yellowstone is huge I don't know how you get around it from the outside whether you can just drive in and uh, I don't really know but I can't see it I just can't see that they're there um, it doesn't make sense with the chart it doesn't make sense with what I see Yellowstone being like um, yeah it just it just all doesn't fit together with this Yellowstone but it does fit together with two children being reefed out of their life and chucked in another life that they don't necessarily want to be in but I really do have the feeling that these children could be safe thank God I, I very rarely get that feeling because most of the time when I do this is they're not safe but I don't feel that this time I actually feel that they may be bunkered down just quickly going back to this is JJ's chart when he vanished after school on the 23rd of September the third house cusp represents school his school and that's ruled by Pisces which in turn is ruled by Jupiter now Jupiter is in the 12th house hidden in the 12th house so another thing that this shows me is that after school on this day he was taken away and hidden in the 12th house there that's hidden so taken from school hidden taken away from his home but close to his home because he's going to another home that's exactly what this chart looks like here so I'm just going to remain hopeful as I said I'm doing these charts as I go I'm, we, there's a lot of charts to do but I'm really quite hopeful for the two children now I don't know why she didn't produce them at the time but you know if she's an absolute crazy doomsdayer who believes that she's God then she may not care about the repercussions of authority and believe that she's in a higher power and higher than those people so if she believes that she wants to hide her children and nobody is to know where they are then that's what she'll do and that could be that look on her face now I'm not saying that she is innocent of anything because she's actually obviously not she's all she has absolutely orchestrated the death of her husbands and I believe Alex as well her brother so I think it's eliminate who gets in the way it's very Scientology like it's weird um, but I don't feel as though the children were actually a part of that because they weren't in the way I mean unless they were in the way of the new relationship but we will have a look at that next we're going to look at Laurie and Chad Daybell's charts when they got married and then the children in relation to both of them and then we'll see how that is so I know I may cop a lot of backlash for this saying that they're just bunkered down and p giving false hope I'm trying I, I never want to give false hope I mean I don't want you know obviously that I don't want to assume that they're deceased of course but I don't like doing the false hope thing either but either way I read it as it is and as I'm seeing it right now is is that 
especially it appears as though JJ is okay. Tylee I'm a little bit dubious with and I, I'm still, like I said, I'm going to go back over some charts and probably by part six of this I would imagine we'll, we should have a clearer picture of what went on with everybody and what's going to happen from then on. I'm still going to do a map as though they're, well, I mean, they are missing still. They still need to be located. The state wants to know where they are. The world wants to know where they are. So even if she thinks that it's the right thing to do to bunker them down and hide them and kill everybody that knows everything, <laughs> allegedly, um, then we'll figure that out by the time we get to the end of it. So thanks for watching again. I know this is purely astrology, so really this is mainly for people that know what I'm talking about. Um, but as I said, by sort of video 6, I think it'll be just a full uh, overview of every single chart and then put it all into perspective of what could have happened. But at this point in time, I am hopeful that both JJ and Tylee are in fact alive. Okay guys, thank you so much. Thanks for your support as always. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Okay, thank you. See ya. Take care.